Remnant 2 is a third-person shooter action RPG and the sequel to Remnant from the Ashes, and it's one of the first third-party games to use Unreal Engine 5. But the game does not support all UE5 technologies, as only Nanite is supported here, with other features like Lumen being absent. This focus on Nanite contributes to the creation of fine detail and seamless environments. Devoid of any level of detail compromises or geometry popping concerns. And on the performance side, this is in my opinion the most demanding game so far this year. And on this video, we'll tackle each graphic setting and examine the performance and visual impact of each one. And see if we can make this game runs better without compromising the visual presentation. So without any further ado, let's get going. Just before I was ready to upload the video, Gunfire released a new patch which improves the game's GPU performance significantly. Like here, I saw around 29% boost to performance when going from the launch version to the new one. And this new patch also added a new setting for shadows. Therefore, this optimization guide is based on the newest version at the time of this video, which is 383.678. Now let's kick off with image quality and upscaler options. In a recent statement, the developer mentioned that they created the game with upscaling technologies like DLSS, FSR and XESS and Mind, which is in my opinion a weak justification for how demanding this game is. Because visually, aside from Nanite, it does not offer anything special. Yet at native 1440p low setting, my 3060Ti can't even get a stable 45fps. So for the best performance, performance using the upscaling options is essential and more important than tweaking the game's graphic settings. Now in terms of upscaling, the game supports DLSS, FSR2 and XESS. And due to its superior anti-aliasing solution, DLSS offers better image stability even when compared to native TAA. But both DLSS and XESS has some trailing problems and small flying objects and particles like here. And FSR and XESS suffer from temporal instability issues like here. And this problem is more evident when using FSR compared to XESS. Native TAA is not perfect either and has obvious good scene when moving the camera. And finally we have DLAA which as usual offers the best image quality and has negligible performance impact compared to TAA. So here I recommend using DLSS if your GPU supports it. Otherwise XESS generally provides superior image quality compared to FSR2. Let's move on to the graphic settings starting with shadow quality, which is one of the most demanding settings in this game. Here in outdoor areas, going from low to medium costs 4% to high 7% and to ultra 12%. But here indoor and some dungeons, shadow can be more demanding. You can see I'm getting around 57 FPS with low. And when going to ultra shadows, the performance dropped by 19% to 46 FPS. But as I mentioned earlier, the newest patch added this new setting called Detailed Shadows, which controls the sharpness and level of detail for shadow rendering. And if we return to the previous scene with ultra shadow quality, I am getting around 46 FPS. And if I disable this setting, the performance improves significantly to 72 FPS. And shadow quality setting also controls the quality and resolution of volumetric effects, like here. So for this setting, I recommend medium shadow quality with detailed shadows disabled. Next we have post-processing and this one mainly controls the quality of post-processing effects like motion blur where using low turn off motion blur even if it's enabled in the graphics menu. However as you can see there is a noticeable artifaction around the character when motion blur is enabled. And on the performance side going from low to medium costs around 1% to high 4% and to ultra 7%. And this setting also controls the quality of depth of field, which is more noticeable during cutscenes like here. And performance wise going from low to medium and high costs around 4% and to ultra 8%. So right now I don't recommend using motion blur, but you can use post processing for depth of field if you like this effect. And medium or high are the best options here.
Foliage quality is next and this one adjusts the density of foliage like here and unexpectedly in terms of performance it's not a demanding setting at all because going from low to even ultra costs around 4% so here I recommend high or ultra foliage quality. Next we have effects quality which controls a lot of visual aspects at once. First we have screen space reflections and using low effects quality disable SSR completely. Next we have particles density and using lower options decrease the amount of particles on screen. And this setting also controls the quality of water simulation effects like here. And terrain quality like here. And it seems like it also controls the quality of global illumination in some areas like here. And in the most demanding areas of this setting, I saw around 11% drop to performance when going from low to medium and 12% to high and ultra. So here I recommend using medium to keep SSR enabled and drop it to low only if you really need the extra performance. Lastly, we have view distance quality, which is an odd setting to include in this game. Normally, this setting should control the level of detail for distant objects, but this game is using Ninite and there is no conventional LOD system here. And as a result, going from low to even ultra view distance quality has no impact on the visuals or the performance. Now, based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Let's now quickly compare optimized settings with ultra preset using XESS ultra quality at 1440p on both sides. And in this area we can see on average around 48% boost to performance by going from ultra preset to optimized settings. So overall, I feel like Remnant 2, just like most 2023 titles, was rushed out before it's ready for release. The visuals on screen don't justify the game's performance and how demanding it is, especially at native resolution, which makes using upscaling technologies like DLSS, FSR and XCSS essential for most users to get decent performance. And the game doesn't offer a lot of settings to tweak, and what's even worse is that some demanding settings like shadows and effects quality controls a lot of visual aspects at once, which really takes away the customization nature we can expect from any good PC port. And right now we can only hope that Gunfire will continue to enhance the performance of Remnant 2 through upcoming updates. And with that we arrive at the end, thank you so much for watching and for your time, if you enjoyed the video you leave a like and if not leave a dislike don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos and hopefully i'll see you all in the next one